this question asks how many lone pairs exist in unhybridized p orbitals in the molecule below? Consider only this resonance contributor. So this question is really about resonance and being able to identify the lone pairs on the molecule and understanding can those lone pairs participate in resonance. Resonance is super key when thinking about p orbitals and unhybridized or hybridized p orbitals because only electrons in um, unhybridized p orbitals can participate in resonance. So that's why it's really important to be able to identify those p orbitals. So let's take a look at our molecule. First things first, I'm going to draw in the lone pairs on our hetero atoms because the lone pairs can really give us a visual about do we have allylic lone pairs? Do we have lone pairs adjacent to positive charges? Um, some of our patterns of resonance. So when I draw in the lone pairs, um, I can um, kind of start to think about, can any of these lone pairs participate in resonance? So knowing that again is really important because the ones that are in, um, that can participate in resonance will be in those unhybridized P orbitals. So first let's take a look at oxygen. Um, the oxygen right down here. That oxygen has two lone pairs. The lone pair is um, allylic to a pi bond. So I'm going to write that next to it. And that is one of our key patterns that we're looking out for. One other important thing to keep in mind is that um, this oxygen atom has two bonds and two lone pairs. And so only one lone pair can participate in the resonance. So if we were to kind of draw the resonance in to figure out like what its um, resonance contributor might look like, only one of the lone pairs can participate. Okay, so that's important to keep in mind because it means that this lone pair here um, can't participate in the resonance. That lone pair is in a hybridized orbital. Whereas the lone pair over here is unhybridized in an unhybridized P orbital. So this one's an sp2 orbital. Um, does it matter which lone pair you pick? Not really, it could have been either one. The key is knowing that only one of the two can participate in resonance, All right? So this would be a hybridized orbital. And if we wanted to kind of draw in, this is a lone pair that's in a p orbital. Okay, so let's take a look at our next lone pair. Um, we have, a lone pair over on this nitrogen atom. And um, in this case, it's really important to recognize that that nitrogen is an amide, which means it's adjacent to a pi bond. So this is another example of an allylic lone pair that can participate in resonance. We can draw the resonance like so, and we could push the electron density up onto the oxygen. So because that lone pair can participate in resonance, that means that it has to be in one of those unhybridized p orbitals that we're looking out for. If it were localized or in a hybridized orbital, then it couldn't participate in the resonance. So we have another unhybridized p orbital here. Okay. And then lastly, let's look at the lone pairs that are on the oxygen atom. Right away, I wanna bring your attention to the fact that the oxygen has a pi bond already. Okay, and that kind of goes back to what we talked about a little bit earlier in this question, that um, the atom will, if it's sp2 hybridized, like in, the, in this case, we know it's sp2 hybridized, so it has two lone pairs and um, one sigma bond. Um, it'll only be able to participate in one pi bond. So that means that the lone pairs that are present on this molecule have to be in hybridized orbitals um, where they can't participate in the resonance at all. Right, so we have um, lone pairs that are in both hybridized, sp2 hybridized orbitals and unhybridized p orbitals. The lone pair electrons that are in unhybridized p orbitals are the ones that can participate in the resonance. So if we count them up, we have one and two pairs that um, are in unhybridized p orbitals and can therefore participate in resonance. So the answer to this question should be C.